Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Summer 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be talking about all things fertilization. Fertilizing your fields is very important because it accumulates up to 45% of your overall yield bonus by going to two stages of fertilization. And there are multiple ways that you can fertilize your fields. You can use organic fertilizer like liquid manure or digestate. We can use solid manure with our manure spreader. We can use mineral fertilizer like solid fertilizer or liquid fertilizer. We can also use a crop in oilseed radish to fertilize our field by cultivating it into the ground. And if we are doing grass work, well, we could roll our field in order to achieve our second fertilization state. There are so many different ways of achieving the same goal. This video is going to try to demonstrate most of those methods. Now there may be a method or two that I may be forgetting. And if that is the case, by all means, please go ahead and put a comment down in your comments below. Now let's talk about the equipment that we're gonna be using here in this video. We're gonna to go to our shop and then under vehicles, we're gonna come here to yield improvement. Under the yield improvement category, we're gonna take a look at the subcategory of sprayers. We're gonna be making use of the Mega 1200L sprayer today and the Mega 1200L tank that's gonna go on the front of our tractor. We also have several other base game sprayers. We have a few trailed sprayers. Then we have a few self-propelled sprayers as well. Now, all of these sprayers are also gonna work with herbicide with respect to our weed control. For our solid fertilizer, well, we're gonna make use of the Amazon ZATS 3200. It's very cheap and it has an extremely wide working width of 42 meters. It's gonna hold 3,200 liters worth of solid fertilizer. There are four base game options from a very small RZK300H that's gonna hold a mere 300 liters worth of fertilizer, all the way up to the Amazon ZGTS 10001 that's gonna hold 10,000 liters of fertilizer. Now the Breedall K105, it's gonna have a configuration option that's gonna allow you to store up to 1,400 liters worth of fertilizer or lime in this particular spreader. With respect to organic fertilization, we have our manure spreaders and we have several different varieties. We have the Veroflex 750. Now this is a very narrow fertilizer spreader and typically you're gonna use this for your vine crops like grapes and olives. As far as regular crops go, we have a TA12050 Power Spread Plus. This is the one we're gonna be demonstrating in today's video. It is a fairly small manure spreader, has an eight meter spread width, and if you want something larger, well, we do have a couple other options available. As far as our liquid slurry goes, our liquid manure and digestate, well, there are several spreading options as well. Most of them are gonna be trailed, but we do have a self-propelled variant that we can also reconfigure into a solid manure spreader as well. We're gonna be using the Super Cease 800 to demonstrate buying some liquid fertilizer. And then I have the PFW 18,000 Maxi Line Plus that we're gonna demonstrate the use of this on the field with. We also have the Annaberger AW22.27. This is a module that's gonna go on the back of a trailer. We can find that trailer by going to combinations. And here we have the trailer chassis for that particular module. And there are several other modules that this particular chassis is gonna work with. Now this particular Annaberger, well, it also is gonna need some attachments in order to do its job. And we're gonna find those attachments over here under slurry tools. Again, under yield improvement, we have various attachments that are gonna be able to attach to some of our slurry tankers. And we're gonna have what I call drip lines, which we're gonna be able to put slurry on the field. And then we have other applicators that are gonna be more like cultivators that are gonna be able to cultivate the particular slurry into the ground or digestate for that fact. We have slurry transport trailers because, well, with respect to organic fertilizer, you're gonna be going through a whole lot of solid manure and a whole lot of slurry. 
And as such, you might want to stage some slurry tankers at the field in order to be able to keep from having to go back and forth, back and forth with a whole lot of repetitivity. So we have the ULT-18 and the ULT-24 slurry tankers right here. They're going to hold 15,000 liters and 21,000 liters respectively. We have a TSA 30,000. This is going to be a semi-tanker that's going to hold 30,000 liters worth of slurry. And then we have a tank here that's going to hold 65,000 liters worth of slurry. And this tank is typically positioned at the side of the field and it is going to be used to store slurry. This isn't necessary to transport slurry. You're going to put this beside the field. You're going to use a tanker like this TSA 30,000 to transport slurry to this tanker. And then you're going to use a slurry applicator to draw from here. Ideally, this would really work well in multiplayer where you could have one person running slurry and another person applying slurry to your fields. With respect to rollers, well, we're going to have to come here to Grass Care. And under Grassland, we have Grassland Care. We have a Dalbo Maxi Roll 630 Green Line. This roller is going to allow us to obtain a second fertilization state without the actual use of any fertilizer by simply rolling our mode field. And we're going to demonstrate that here in a little bit. Then we have oilseed radish. And oilseed radish is an interesting crop. It's a crop that we do not actually harvest. We plant it for the sole responsibility of cultivating it or working it into the soil after it's gone through at least one growth stage. And to do that, well, we could pick any sort of cultivator, plow, disc harrow, power harrow, or subsoiler that we would like to use. And basically it's gonna achieve the process of working that crop into the soil and as a result we're going to get a fertilization stage benefit. Now that we've talked about some of the machinery that we're going to make use of today let's talk about where we're going to be able to find our liquid fertilizer, our solid fertilizer, our organic fertilizer in our slurry and manure as well as our digestate. Let's talk about digestate first. Digestate is going to be the output of a BGA, a biogas plant. And the BGA for Riverbend Springs, well, it's going to be found up here in the northeast corner of the map. Depending on the map you are playing on, it may or may not have a biogas plant. If it doesn't have a biogas plant, well, that's fine because you can put one down yourself. You can go here into build mode. You can come over here to factories. And there are three different options as far as placeable BGAs that you can pick from, from $435,000 up to $1.2 million for the big boy that we see here. Now, why might you entertain using or buying the BGA? Well, it's because it's a, got a really interesting ratio here as far as used to output, or inputs to outputs. In fact, we're gonna get 90% of what we put into the BGA out as digestate. And digestate can be put on the fields as a fertilizer. So for example, if we put manure in here, 2,200 liters or 2,020 liters, we're gonna get 1,880 liters or 18 liters out. Exactly 90% of what we put in, we're gonna be able to get out as digestate. And we're also gonna get a little bit of money as a result of selling electric energy and methane gas. The same is gonna hold for silage. We're gonna get 90% of the silage back as digestate. Slurry, again, 90%. And sugar be cut, again, 90%. So there's just a 10% loss with respect to what we put into it versus what we get out of it and what we can get out of it we can bring over to our fields using a slurry tanker and apply it for our fertilization state. So I think it's a really, really neat way of basically getting fertilizer while at the same time earning money by processing those various inputs into electrical energy and methane gas.
Now, with respect to our slurry tanker, right, we have this here, as I mentioned. If you have cows, water buffalo, or pigs, you're going to be able to draw slurry out of select animal pins, like this animal pin we have here. You can draw 30,000 liters worth of slurry directly out of here. And if it's slurry or digestate, it's basically the same thing as far as the game's concerned. One fertilization or one liquid is no better than the other liquid as far as fertilization goes. Now let's talk a little bit about solid fertilizer. Solid fertilizer, again, if you have cows, water buffalo, pigs, if you provide them straw, then as an output of simply feeding them and supplying them straw, you're going to get manure if you put down a manure heap. Here I have a manure heap, and we have some manure spawn in here as a result of our cows. We can come over here to the side of this heap and simply hit R to fill and fill manure directly from the heap into our manure spreader. We could also, if we wanted to be a little bit more realistic with our gameplay, we could use a wheel loader, telehandler, skid steer, or front loader to load our manure directly from this heap. So we could drive in here with a bucket or a manure fork and collect this directly and then dump it into our spreader. Now, in addition to getting slurry and manure from our animals, well, we can also buy it down at the animal dealer. And I have to tell you, it's a pretty darn good deal buying it down there at the animal dealer. Maybe not as good as deal as getting it for free from your own animals, but if you're early in the gameplay and you don't quite have enough animals to have a nice steady supply of slurry or liquid manure, then you may want to entertain buying it from here. On Riverbend Springs again, we're going to find our animal dealer right here in the central town, right here where the river kind of goes, bends up and around. We have our vehicle shop located right here. Kate is going to be located here. And then in and around the animal dealer, we have our liquid manure buy point or our solid manure buy point. And we're just going to come up here to this output pipe. There we have our indicator icon. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit R. And it's gonna ask us, do we wanna buy slurry? Yes, we do. And we can actually buy slurry and manure for basically 11 cents per liter. So imagine fertilizing your fields at 11 cents per liter. Now, as I've already mentioned, you're going to be putting a whole lot of manure and a whole lot of slurry on your fields when you do this. But again, 11 cents per liter, it's pretty hard to beat. There we go. We just filled this thing up. 9,000 liters for $980. Now, when it comes to purchasing solid fertilizer or mineral fertilizer, well, we've got a few choices for that. We have a fill silo right here. Now this is going to be the most expensive way, at least with the base game fill silo, in order to buy solid fertilizer. Because you're going to be spending around $3.84 per liter in order to purchase solid fertilizer. So let's go ahead and see. We're putting 10,000 liters worth of solid fertilizer in here. And it's going to cost us approximately... $38,000. There we go. $38,400. Well, I, for one, don't really want to spend that much money per liter when I could just spend 11 cents per liter with our fertilizer or slurry or our manure. Well, that's okay. We can come here to the shop because we can come up to our yield improvement once again. And from yield improvement, we can go to consumables and we can buy a pallet of solid fertilizer for $1,920 per thousand liters or basically $1.92 per liter. Or we could buy liquid fertilizer 
$3,200 per 2,000 liters. And that's actually cheaper at $1.62 per liter with respect to liquid fertilizer versus solid fertilizer. I honestly have been working under the impression for a long time that liquid fertilizer was more expensive than solid fertilizer, but clearly it's not if you base it on those costs. Now there's other ways of buying these products as well. And I have a liquid fertilizer and solid fertilizer storage tank over here that I purchased from the build menu. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here we are in the build menu. We're gonna go to our sheds category. We're gonna to toggle over to objects, well, containers. And from containers, we have our liquid storage. It's gonna hold up to 173,500 liters worth of liquid fertilizer. And then we have our solid storage tank, which is gonna hold up to 60,000 liters of solid fertilizer. And when you put these tanks down, you're gonna have a fill trigger and you're gonna have a buy trigger. If we come up to the buy trigger and hit R on our keyboard, well, we're gonna be able to buy liquid fertilizer in. Now we can move this slider to determine how much fertilizer we buy. And you can see that basically at a thousand liters, well, this is gonna cost us $1.32 per liter to buy liquid fertilizer directly and put it into our storage tank. Now with respect to our solid fertilizer, well, the costs are cheaper than buying it in big bag or pallet format, but it's still more expensive than our liquid at $1.76 per liter. And that again is to purchase it. Now let's divert real quick and talk about rolling grass and obtaining a second fertilization state by using our Dalbo roller. If we go ahead and take a look here at our PDA and we're gonna cycle over to our fertilization state, here we have field 44. And I've mowed a single pass of field 44 with our big kahuna over there, our big, big mower. And we're gonna now use our roller on this field. And what you're going to see is this roller is going to basically fertilize the field. It's going to knock the grass down a little bit when it does this. And if we look at our PDA, you're going to see that we're getting our second fertilization state simply by making use of this roller. Can you tell we're getting our second fertilization state because you can see how dark the part that we are rolling is compared to the rest. And then as I mentioned, you know, we do have the grass that's kind of knocked down here as compared to the grass that's cut. If you happen to roll grass that is uncut, well, you will see that it is going to knock that grass back. So you want to make sure that you are rolling grass that has just been mowed and not going through any sort of growth state. Now let's talk a little bit about oilseed radish. So oilseed radish is a crop. We're going to find it here listed under our crop types. And oilseed radish is not necessarily a crop that you're going to plant in order to harvest. Oilseed radish is used exclusively for fertilization. So what you would do is after harvest, you would come through and either direct seed oilseed radish or you would cultivate the field and then you would seed oilseed radish into the ground. You would wait for it to get to at least one growth state. In fact, it only has one growth state. So oilseed radish will look like this forever if you don't do anything with it. And then what we're gonna come through with is a cultivator, plow, shallow cultivator, power harrow, whatever really. And we're gonna work the soil. 
So let's go ahead and drop this thing in the ground and make a little bit of a pass and I'll show you what's going on. So what we're doing is we are actively working this plant matter into the soil and as a result we are enriching the soil and well we're getting a fertilization state. So let's come back over here and let's go ahead and check and here we go we have a fertilization state as a result of cultivating our oilseed radish into the ground. So again, something you might use this for is you harvest your crop in autumn, you then maybe work the soil, you plant your oilseed radish, and then it grows and it just sits in the field over winter. And then spring comes, and at that point you go and you cultivate your oilseed radish back into the ground, and then you plant your crops, and you have one state of fertilization already done before you have your crop into the ground. Now here we have our Amazon and of course we have a pallet and big bag over here so we could fill from here by just driving up to it hitting R. Now this spreader is a whole lot bigger than one might think and as a result it's a lot heavier than one might think. So it's very advisable regardless of the tractor that you have this spreader attached to to have a good sized front weight also attached to this trailer. I can't tell you how many times I've attached a tractor that was a little bit too small for this spreader and well found the front end of my tractor either tipping up in the air or extremely light and therefore it's pretty hard to control. Now we're going to finish filling this up by coming over here to our fill silo. We're going to hit R, we're going to hit start. And there we go, since we've already purchased this, we're not getting charged any additional money. Now, I want to talk about how we use some of this machinery. So here I have the solid fertilized spreader, the Amazon 3200 solid fertilized spreader. And you'll see we have something new showing up here under our F1 menu, and it says partial width. And it says 42 meters. Well, on keyboard, we can control Z, and that will allow us to change the working width of this particular spreader. So let's go ahead and make this as narrow as possible. Wrong button. So let's go ahead and make this as narrow as possible. We're gonna turn it on. And here you can see we are spreading a 15 meter spread. Now, if I go ahead and hit Control Z, well, that's now 42 meters. So let's turn this on. And now you can see we are, again, hitting the wrong button. We are now spreading 42 meters worth of fertilizer. If we hit Control Z, we're gonna step it in and we're gonna do it again. And again, and again, and again, back down to the narrowest width. And one more time, back up to the maximum width. Now, why might you do that? Well, maybe, maybe you're fertilizing your field and you don't need a full 42 meters to finish it off. You can narrow it down because if you also notice, you'll see the usage rate, 272 liters per minute. As we step this down, well, we're using less per minute down to a minimum of 97 liters per minute because the usage on this fertilizer spreader is by the minute. So you want to basically minimize your time in the field by having a tractor with good size power to it, by having a tractor that has maintenance done on it so that you're going to be driving ideally at the maximum speed possible for your fertilization so you're spending the least amount of time with this spreader turned on and therefore you're going to be putting the least amount of product on the field which means you're going to be saving money in the end now there are key bindings that you can add 
from the base key bindings. And we're going to find those here under our escape menu. We're going to come down here to settings and controls. And let's go ahead and scroll down here. And what we're going to find is that we can not only change the working width, we're going to have the ability to modify the working width smaller or larger at the touch of a button. Or we could also decide to change the working width with respect to reducing the left side, reducing the white right side, and things like that. It's really cool. So here it is under vehicle work. We have control Z for changing work width. All right, well, we also have activate right partial width, deactivate right partial width, activate left partial width, and deactivate left partial width. So let's go here and let's make this control left arrow, control right arrow, and alt left arrow, and alt right arrow, just for demonstration purposes. We're gonna save our controls. And let's come back to our spreader. Let's pull up our F1 menu. And now again, if we control Z, we're changing both sides equally. But if I do control left arrow or control right arrow, now I'm making the right side, well, look. Now the left side is basically going as far to the left as possible. The right side though is spreading just a little bit. And then if I control left arrow, we're now increasing that working width until we are all the way out to the max. And alt left arrow, our right arrow is gonna draw the left side in while we have maximum spread on our right side. Then alt left arrow, basically how I set it, is now going to maximize the left side. So in the end, we really now are able to dynamically, as we are spreading, decide how much product do we put on the field and where do we put that product on the field. Now it's important to note, not all spreaders have this capability. The Amazon spreaders do. The Breed Owl, I do believe, does not. So just be careful when you buy this because you may find that the spreader that you purchase doesn't have this capability. Something else that has this capability is the liquid fertilized sprayers. So let's go ahead and hook up to our sprayer here. We have a front tank and then we have our sprayer that goes on the rear. And the reason I'm using a front tank is simply to extend the, the capacity of the sprayer. Let's come over here to our liquid tanker. We're gonna to toggle to our front tank and we're gonna hit R to fill. And we are now filling our front tank. And we can see a little fill gauge there. So we are now full. We're gonna to toggle to the rear. And we're gonna start filling. And we look and see our fill gauge going down, which means we are full. And there we go, we are full now at 2,700 liters worth of liquid fertilizer. We're going to unfold our sprayer. And just like our solid fertilized spreader, we have the ability of changing our working width. So control Z is going to be able to lower our working width from 24 meters down to 2 meters. And then we have our control left and right in order to modify our right side and alt left and right in order to modify our left side. So let's turn this on. 
and you see we are applying at a rate of 140 liters per minute for our 24 meter spread but as we modify that we're down to 105 70 41 or 12 liters per minute for just the little few meter spread and then we can extend our right boom one segment at a time and we can extend our left boom one segment at a time again by using that control left right arrow and alt left right arrow that we talked about previously so again we can really tweak what product do we put on the field and where do we put that product onto the field so that we're not overusing product by spraying it outside the boundary of the field where it's not doing us any good but it's still causing us to use money. Now the organic spreader and slurry applicator, well, they have an interesting little trick up their sleeve. And that is that we could actually apply a double fertilization rate in a single pass. So as you know, in order to get maximum fertilization, you need to fertilize your fields twice. Well, with our organic fertilizers, we're going to be able to do that by activating double application rate. And what that basically does is it halves the working speed. So you just drive slower across the field and end up putting twice as much on the field. Pretty, pretty basic. So we're going to unfold our manure spreader and we're going to turn it on and we're going to drive away and look at that manure fly out of the unit i mean we can really see that dropping as far as our fill capacity because well organic manure is used at a much higher rate than mineral fertilizer now let's go ahead and double our application rate and in doing that now we're working with is is half we're down to five miles an hour but we're still dumping product out at the same rate. We can deactivate that once again by doing comma. And now we're back up to basically nine miles per hour. And there we go. So if we come here and look at our field, it's quite an interesting mess, isn't it? But here we have our double application rate on our manure. As I mentioned, the same is going to apply here with our slurry tanker. We can do single application rate or double. So we're going to unfold our applicator. And depending on the tool, well, you may or may not have to actually turn this thing on. Like, for example, for our solid manure spreader, we had to unfold it and then we had to turn it on. For our slurry tanker, Sometimes we have to turn it on. It looks like this one we will. Other times we just drop it down and the act of dropping it down turns it on, which is exactly what just happened. So we are now applying slurry. If I sit here, I'm dumping it in the ground. I'm getting no benefit, but I'm dumping the product as you can see in the lower right. So we wanna make sure that we are moving the instant we drop this applicator down and off we go we can activate double activation rate now we're going at five miles an hour as opposed to 10. and we are now dumping double the product and therefore we are getting to fertilization states i've turned that off we come back here and now we can see that we have our single fertilization state Now the next test I want to do, or the next thing I want to demonstrate, is we're going to attempt to roughly calculate how much of each type of fertilizer do we apply to a field of a specific size. So here we are on, again, Riverbend Springs, and we have field 41. And field 41 is 1.18 hectares in size the entire farmland. And what's interesting about this farmland is, for the most part, it is 99% field. So there's just a little bit of fringe grass on the sides, 
and then at the other end of the field, well, there's a fence. So it can't extend too terrible far beyond that. So we're going to basically hire a helper to fertilize this field with one application rate using all four of these method, methods. Liquid fertilizer, manure, sorry, slurry, manure, liquid fertilizer, and solid fertilizer. It's over there. So again, I'm gonna attach, let's say our solid fertilizer spreader. I'm gonna line myself up here on the field. I'm gonna hire a helper and just let him do his thing. I'm going to then calculate how much product was used. We're gonna write it down. We're gonna do the same thing with our liquid fertilizer sprayer, our manure spreader, and our slurry tanker. And when we come back, I have all those figures tabulated up. So you'll know basically for this field, which is 1.18 hectares in size, how much product did we use for each of those different methods? And that's gonna be able to roughly calculate out what's the cheapest way of doing fertilizer maybe? I don't know, it's really up to you. The way I look at it, fertilize the way you want. So the results are in and I am rather shocked at the results, quite frankly. Now we did modify my working methodology a little bit here on field 41. I mentioned that I was going to hire a helper and have the hired helper fertilize this field. I decided actually against it because I thought the hired helper would possibly overlap too much and I wouldn't have enough control over limiting that. So instead I manually ran these implements up and down the field using GPS to help keep them overlap to an absolute minimum. And for our solid fertilized spreader, well, it holds 3,200 liters worth of product and we used 2,000, no, we used 212 liters. I was looking at what was left in the tank, not how much we used. We used 212 liters worth of product in order to fertilize that field. If we take the cost to buy that amount of product, from our solid fertilizer tank over here. Well, and then it cost me $373 to fertilize that field because our solid fertilized storage tank comes to $1.76 per liter. With respect to our liquid fertilizer, it costs $1.32 to buy it from our liquid fertilized storage tank and we use 296 liters for the product. That means it cost me $390 to fertilize with my liquid fertilizer sprayer. So while liquid fertilizer is cheaper, we use just enough more with our liquid fertilizer to actually make it just a little bit more expensive. Now the interesting results are over here with respect to our organic fertilizer. If we pretend that we don't have enough organic fertilizer in our animal pens, in or digestate, okay? Either the BGA doesn't have enough or our animal pens don't have enough liquid slurry. Well, then we're gonna have to buy it over at the animal dealer. And while it's 11 cents per liter over at the animal dealer, well, the usage rate on field 41 is through the roof, which I pretty much knew it would be. Our slurry usage. Our slurry tank holds 18,000 liters we used nearly 14,000 liters of that storage. We used 13,931 liters to fertilize field 41. If we take that times 11 cents per liter, it's $1,532, $1,532, I should say, to fertilize field 41 with purchased slurry. Boom, that just blew my mind. If we had to purchase our manure, again, if our cows, our water buffalo, or our pigs are basically not producing enough manure to fertilize the field, so we had to go buy it. Well, I had to fill our fertilized spreader, our manure spreader, once. It holds 9,000 liters. In the end, we used 15,056 liters worth of solid manure. 
at 11 cents per liter. That was the most costly at $1,656 to fertilize little old field one, which is just over one hectare in size. Imagine what it would cost to have fertilized this larger field on the other side of the road. So while slurry and manure are dirt cheap down at the animal dealer, your usage is through the roof. And that's just for one state of fertilization. So they end up being the most expensive ways to fertilize your field if you have to actually buy the fertilizer. Now, if you have enough cows, water buffalo, or pigs to produce manure or slurry for your applications, then you're good to go. Or if you're doing some big time BGA operations and you got a whole lot of digestate, well, then you're good to go because it's basically free. But again, if you have to buy it, don't. It's not economical at all, given the usage rate. Solid fertilizer ends up, indeed, being the cheapest way to fertilize the field. 